Like Mike Tice, I'm quite nice on fight night. Why you popping shit, man? I thought you liked life. Yo, from knowing you for years, I don't think I ever told you that that scheme right there, like, carried me through high school. Man, I don't know what high school you went to with that, David, because <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> nah. Crazy. That was a random two bars, nigga. It got you through life. Nah. It, it, it's because um, I was get, really getting into battle rap at the time mm-hmm. and just really starting to break down words. So Mike Tice, I'm quite nice on fight night. When you talk about like internal rhyme schemes and, and, and patterns and, and syllables, I was learning from watching a lot of different battle rap at the time. Let me stop you. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even want to act as if it was some, design, some, some grand divine plan. It really wasn't. Like That was just the way we were rhyming in Detroit at the time. Like I really feel, and I, I stand on the statement that Detroit produces the the technical the, the the most technical rappers were the best rappers. You may not like the content, but technically, when you break down the words, we produce the best rappers. Whether you're Guilty Simpson, or whether you're Ice Ware Bezo, like whether you're Street Lord Juan or fucking Jay Dilla, like it's always gonna be the best rapper. So that's what I was going up against at home. That's what I was seeing at home. So it wasn't like I was trying to change the world. It just so happened that I was one of the few people who was rapping like that that had a shot at, at some form of, of spotlight. Uh, walk me through that process. Like, do you just get a call? Look, you battling M today. How, no, how not at all. We were all extras. We're like, So that's my big thing when, when people... When people my age or older from the city say, you know, M didn't do enough, it doesn't sit well with me because if you were a rapper at that time, you were an extra in that movie. You legitimately got a check from him in it. Mm. No matter how big or how small, you got a check from him. And you got three square meals a day from the nigga. That's a lot. Um, I was an extra. They knew everybody were rappers. They were trying to keep the morale up in the city. They wanted, they, they, I mean, in the, on the set. They, they, they wanted to do a contest just for B-roll footage, you know, just so you could see yourself and be like, oh, shit, that's me. Um, so they did, they just had rappers rap. It was very easy for me. I was amongst all my peers. Like I knew, I knew everybody there. It just so happens by the grace of God, man, I was one of the people they picked. And I'll, I'll, I'm always grateful to Eminem, to Paul Rosenberg, to, to Curtis Hansen, to everybody who was involved in picking what they chose to sell the DVDs, because it literally changed my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it legitimately changed my life. Like, it made me not be able to go most places. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't have any, like, you'll never catch me saying a bad word about Eminem. Like, legit. I get kind of like, I'm kind of on the fence about it, on talking about it, just because it was 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I don't ever want people, I don't want to give myself the impression that that's where everything stopped for me. Since then, I've done really incredible things in battle rap, in music, in movies. So uh, it's always very tongue in cheek when I talk about it, but I'm more grateful about it than I am upset. Got you. So when you hear Benzino, get on the track and he says to him last time you battled it was like 22 years ago versus marv one what was the outcome of that matchup marv one and you got so many eyes on it i'm sure your mentions were blowing up what's the first thing that you think when you hear that shit who the fuck wrote this <laughs> this man has no idea who i am right who the fuck wrote this i i, I felt like i first of all even if that man clearly lost the battle to me, he's won at life. He's won the war, bro. Mm-hmm. So it, it doesn't matter. Like, it don't fucking matter. And two, you'll never get me in any kind of in any kind of form going against my fucking friend, whether it's for your recognition or not. To this day, if that's the case, I'll, I'll scream from the mountaintop, I lost that battle. Mm-hmm. You'll never be the person to say I won. Like, for real, for real. That's my legitimate friend. Don't don't try to weaponize me against my friends. And do you think M will respond in any way, shape, or fashion? 
I think M is counting money mm. at that point. Like, for what? Why would respectfully like? Why would you pour gas on a fire that's dying out? That's what a response would be. You know what I'm saying? You're mm. pouring gas on a fire that's dying out. Like, oh shit! Well, that fire is going, and then you're like, you know what? I want to keep this fire going. It, it it wouldn't make sense to me, competitive wise. I get it, but then I just feel like for the greater good, the bigger picture, it wouldn't make sense. Let him have his, his five minutes of fame because it won't give him fifteen. Well, uh, Cassius responded. Do you think it's a it's a good thing? Kind of like I don't know. I guess maybe in the same vein as the Kendrick Control verse, where you're just gonna get people that we haven't heard from responding, and I the mean, fans might like that. I think the people he spoke on definitely have the right to express how they feel about it. Um, because you don't necessarily have to bring anybody else in to your beef when you're trying to get your point across. Right. So the people that he, the people that he name checked, especially in a, in a, in a negative light, definitely have the green light to go ahead and, and express themselves. 